Hey there, I'm Ed Marcus, I'm a developer evangelist at Hedera. In the last video, you saw how to enable KYC for users by specifying a KYC key for your token. You saw how to update certain properties of your token when you have an admin key, and how to schedule transactions. Now you'll see how to pause all token operations if there's a pause key. You'll see how to freeze token operations for a specific user, wipe a user's balance if there's a wipe key, and how to delete a token if it has an admin key. We refer to this ability to make changes as controlled mutability, but with the Hedera token service, you can also create immutable tokens if they don't have any of these keys. As you know by now, we're using JavaScript with Visual Studio Code, but you can also use your favorite IDE or code editor. And remember that we also have SDKs for Java, Go, and .NET. We're gonna use the code from the previous video as a starting point, so be sure to check that out. And we're gonna jump right into it. The first thing we're going to do is pause all token operations, which is something you would consider for things like audits. So this would help you comply with that kind of request. We use the token pause transaction module. Specify the ID of the token we need to pause. Freeze the transaction with the client for signing. This transaction must be signed by the pause key we specified when we created the token. Then we submit the signed transaction to the network with the client, get a receipt, and I'll put a confirmation message with the transaction status to the console. We want to test the token pause by trying an NFT transfer. So we use the transfer transaction module. Add a transfer of NFT with serial three from the treasury to Alice, freeze with the client, the treasury signs, and the client submits the signed transaction to the network. Now we're gonna use a try catch statement here. We'll try to get a receipt and output a confirmation message for the transfer. And if that fails, we'll catch it by doing a token query and also outputting a message to the console that shows the pause status of the token. We run the code. Here we see everything we've been doing from parts one and two. And there we see what we just did in part three, where the token pause is successful and the NFT transfer didn't go through because the token status is indeed paused. We now unpause our token so we can move on with our example. We do that with the token unpause transaction. And it's basically a repeat of everything we just did for the token pause. So specify the token ID, freeze, sign, submit, get a receipt, and I'll put a confirmation message. Step two out of four is to freeze a user account for this token. In this case, we're freezing Alice's. That just means that Alice won't be able to send or receive this token unless her account is unfrozen. So we use the token freeze transaction module, specify the token and the account that we want to freeze for that token. Freeze the transaction for signing, then we submit to the network, get a receipt, and output the confirmation message. We also want to test this freeze, and we do that by trying a transfer transaction. Alice has the NFT with serial two, so we'll try to send that to Bob in exchange for 100 HBAR. We'll freeze the transaction. Both parties sign because they're sending something. We execute, get a receipt, and log a message. If that fails, we'll just catch it with a simple message given that we know why it failed. Alice's account is frozen for this token. So let's run the code. There, the status would show as a success, but we need to fix that in the code for the next run. We know Alice's account is frozen, and therefore the NFT transfer she tried did not go through. Instead, we got our catch message. Back to the code, we make adjustments. 
And then we unfreeze Alice's account so that we can continue on. And again, the token unfreeze transaction works just like the token freeze we did before. So we can go over this one quickly. Then step three out of four is to wipe the token with our token ID from a user account. In this case, Alice, poor Alice. Um, but you would consider wiping tokens for a user if they cheated or broken some rules for using your token. And you can wipe balances partially or entirely, as long as your token has that wipe key during creation. For the wipe, we use the token wipe transaction module. Specify the account ID to wipe, that's Alice. Specify the token ID to wipe. In this case, since it's a specific NFT that we want to wipe, we specify the serial number of that NFT. We freeze the transaction for signing. The transaction must be signed by the wipe key for that token. Then the client executes the signed transaction and gets a receipt. And we output our typical confirmation message to the console. Now let's check Alice's balance with our B checker function that we wrote before. And let's also do a token query to see how the total supply of the token changed. We run the code. There we see the status of the wipe transaction. Alice has no NFT with our token ID anymore. And the current token supply is now three instead of four. That means that the NFT that Alice had was also burned, taken out of circulation. Now, that's different from the token mint and burn transactions that we covered in the first video because those two only add or remove tokens from the treasury account for that token. Whereas this wipe transaction removes and burns tokens from a specific user account, not the treasury. So it's good to keep those differences in mind. And coming back to the code, step four out of four today is to delete the token. That's the token delete transaction module. We set the token ID we need to delete. Freeze the transaction for signing. Remember that token update and delete operations must be signed by the admin key. And if you don't specify an admin key during token creation, then it's not possible to update or delete your token. We execute the signed transaction and get a receipt with the client. Output a confirmation message with the transaction status. And finally, we do a token info query to confirm that our token is deleted. Run the code. And there we see the results for this last part. The token deletion was successful and our token now shows up as deleted. Now, once you delete a token, it remains on the ledger, so you can still get information on it, but it's not possible to do any operations for that token. You will just get an error message saying that the token was deleted. So to summarize it all, in part one, we created a token, in fact, an NFT, and a custom fee schedule to collect royalties. We minted five new tokens and used content identifiers from IPFS for the NFT metadata and images. We burned one of those tokens, so our supply changed from five to four NFTs. Then we associated two users to our token, Alice and Bob, and transferred an NFT to those two folks. In part two, we took a step back and enabled token KYC for Alice and Bob before transferring the NFT. We updated token properties like the KYC key, which can be useful if you change identity verification providers, for example. And we also scheduled a transaction, which was a token transfer from Bob back to Alice. Finally, in part three today, we learned how to pause a token and stop all token transactions, which applies to all the tokens with the same ID. We froze a user account for a token, which applies only to that token and that user. We saw how to wipe tokens from a specific user and we deleted a token. So by now you know a lot about the Hedera token service. 
If you want this code and a step-by-step -step guide, then be sure to check out this blog post. Go to the code check section and grab the code and start trying it out today. But don't just stop there. You can continue learning about our other services in the documentation. And our learning center is also a great resource to learn more about the technology and the space. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching.